everybody, it's Kate here. Welcome back to Communicate, uh, the live series where we quite literally just communicate with various creatives from around the globe, if you will. Hey! Hi! Hi, how's it going? What's up? It's going, going great. How are you? Hi, thanks. How are you? I am excellent. So great. what we are going to do is our snazzy little check here. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. You can see me. <laughs> yeah, I can hear you. <laughs> Excellent. And everything's good with my connection, too. So everybody, hello. This is the amazingly talented Taylor Ariel, but known as Starseed, your productions and everything that you put together. So what we're going to do, we're just going to jump right into it because you have so much going on. And I'm so proud of you. I just want to say that. Oh, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Absolutely, of course. So let's talk about your past year and some of the creative endeavors that you have been on. Uh, are there any specific creative endeavors that come to mind that you would like to tell your following about or kind of recap for us all? Um, well, I'm currently um, working on my solo project, Starseed. Um, I compose and produce my own music. Um, I released um, quite a few songs this year, um, one of them being set me free which i just released um uh, a couple days ago on the 31st yes. that's so, awesome um, that's been um uh, my main focus and um uh also um aiming for live shows as well yes i would absolutely love to see you live if you ever would like to come to the central or upstate new york girl you're totally welcome oh that would like, be let's like really let's fun. put together a show you could shred anyways i, I always kind of like do these sidetracks whenever we start talking about live shows yeah. because you are always welcome we have such an amazing scene uh, here absolutely oh that'd be so cool yes and I I was like, obviously, before I interview folk, you know, I make sure to kind of look through their page and really get an idea of what they're about. So you're not only a guitarist um, and you post a lot of guitar videos, but like you said, you released a lot of new music in 2023, uh, specifically with vocals. So that's pretty incredible, too. You have a very powerful uh, voice. Uh, so that's oh, really awesome to have you help represent the rock scene for women. So, so speaking much. of which, what are some upcoming projects uh, in 2024 that you would like people to know about? And where can we find that? Um, um, well, definitely, like I was saying, I'm trying to go for um, playing live. That's uh, going to be the main goal for 2024. I'm hoping to um, start to play live shows and um, bring um, my Starseed originals to the stage because that's something that I've been wanting to do for a really long time. And I hope that 2024 helps um, bring that into fruition. I think it will. <laughs> I think you just manifested it. So there you go. <laughs> Absolutely. So speaking of which, let's talk about live shows because I know you're really pushing that. Um, let's take a moment to manifest a little bit more. Who would you like to play a live show with in 2024? Oh, I know good. that's like, it might be a hard question on the spot because like it's so saturated with so many creative individuals, but yeah. first person that comes to mind, who would you like to share the stage with or open for in 2024? Um, there's so many, um, but I guess the first that <laughs> comes to mind is probably like Evanescence. That would be really cool. Yes. Oh my goodness, that that would be a perfect match, actually, because again, <laughs> she's got that lower, very powerful voice for the fronting, fronting a rock metal band. So that's quite awesome. And would it be you just solo up there as Starseed with with some cool pedals, or would it would it be you in a band with? I'd, I'd maybe... be hoping for a band. Yeah. Um, like that would be really cool to have other live members um, play the Starseed originals live. I would love that. Maybe, maybe one day you could even get Evanescence to like collaborate on a tune oh, yes. <laughs> or add a verse or add a verse to one of your existing songs. That'd be really cool. Yeah. I'd love so let's definitely speaking that into existence a little bit. So let's talk about other creatives a little bit more in, in terms of your own music, in terms of your own songwriting, because that's very, very important. You're very talented. Um, Thank you. So who are your top three songwriting inspirations or top three inspirations when it comes to musicality sound who's really inspiring you at this time um 
Well, for me, um, I'm definitely really inspired by 90s and early 2000s um, rock and metal music. That's like a huge Sorry. <laughs> I love that you said that. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah, I Very love nice. I feel like I'm a 90s soul at heart. Um, so definitely bands like, you know, Nirvana, Alice in Chains, Soundgarden, um, Stone Temple Pilots, you know, the list goes on. And then like for early 2000s, you know, bands like Evanescence, like I mentioned, and um, Breaking Benjamin, Chevelle. There's so many bands I could keep going. <laughs> Chevelle, yes, absolutely. Evanescence, like you said, mm. there are just so many. Yeah. But yeah. you know what I've really noticed uh, in terms of what you said about 90s and 2000s? That's really making a comeback in today's music, not only yeah. in rock and metal, but in pop music too. It's just, it's really making a comeback. So it's very interesting to see that full circle moment yeah. of how music is just you know, it's almost like a merry-go-round of influences, which is really awesome. And that 90s sound, dude, it's, just, it's timeless. It really yeah. is. Not everybody will agree with that, but it's definitely yeah, timeless it's for sure. Definitely, like, one of the best eras in music. It is. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if you're into Britney Spears at all, because that's, like, a totally different direction. But I remember having, like, you know, a little radio and spinning a little CD yeah. like that, so... Yeah, absolutely. It's crazy how time flies like that. Yeah. Um, so I know there are a lot of guitar people in the audience for sure. And you are no stranger to guitars either. So what guitar are you playing at the moment or which one has really caught your eye? Is there any that's that's really like caught your eye different from what you usually gravitated towards? Yeah, so I've been playing a lot of um, Ibanez. My main guitar is an Ibanez uh, series. Um, but I I'm definitely um, eyeing the Gibson SG because that's a guitar that I've always wanted. Um, and um, I definitely saw a couple of models by Jackson that would be really cool to play as well. I love all of those answers. <laughs> you have great taste, girl. <laughs> great taste. Yeah, you know, I saw that Sierra Levesque was actually on here. Are you, you're probably familiar yeah, with I Sierra Levesque. Her page, it's, she yes. has a really cool, yeah. I always hype her up. She actually uh, came to Syracuse for a show while she was touring. We're going to talk about that on her episode. Oh, cool. But yeah, de definitely manifesting a show in upstate New York for you. Yeah, thank um, you. That'd be really cool. Ab absolute. So, you know, we do chat a lot about uh, gear and guitars that we love, especially on the Guitar World articles that I have done. Speaking of which, Guitar World, you got a new artist on your radar right here. Absolutely, you do. Yeah, thank you. In contrast, in contrast, though, what are some aspects that you absolutely would not want on a guitar that you would just be like, nope, I, I don't want that at all? Um, I think any guitar that's, like, super heavy, because um, if I'm going to play live, I don't want, like, something that's, like, <laughs> really heavy about to break my back. Um, yeah. but not ergonomical. Um, yeah. And also it's nice to have like a, a thinner neck. Um, it just makes um, playing more fun. Yeah, yeah. definitely, absolutely. It's, it's definitely easier on the hands a little bit. That's yeah. That's for sure, having a, a thinner neck, but definitely the heavy guitars, not ergonomical yeah. at all. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. What about string gauge? What what are you into when it comes to string gauge? Do you like it lighter, heavier? Um, I I tend to go for um, heavier strings just because um, I do like lower tunings a lot. I'm like in drop C a lot, drop B, so it's kind of nice to have like um, less fret buzz. So I usually go for like Ernie Ball or like one of those right. that have like the, yeah. or like the hybrid strings, you know, that are like fit, um, thinner on the bottom or heavier, heavier on top. So yeah. Nice. Everybody, this person has great taste right here. <laughs> Starseed, follow <laughs> yeah. for sure. Look into her music again, Guitar World. You have another artist on your radar. Um, for those who may not be familiar, because this is kind of how we started conversating a little bit, I had a, a long streak of writing for Guitar World for about a year freelance. Um, and they did move a few things around, but definitely they're still looking for artists to write about. So it's good to have you on. So speaking, you so speaking of live shows and absolute, um, 
there's lots that have happened this year with live shows because of, you know, lockdowns over every, it's almost like the, the 20s are in full swing again. People are going yeah. out to shows. Uh, are there any fun gig stories that come to mind um, when it comes to like going out to see another person's show or your own show? It could even be an open mic, anything that you did or played live. Um, well, I did a couple of gigs this year um, playing um, with some other bands and that was pretty cool. Um, to um a cool experience to learn other bands songs and um like you know learn their material um so that was definitely like a fun experience um getting to play their songs live and all of that that's awesome um so that's all about i mean that's a great collab to learn other people's originals and it helps spread the word on their music but also shows how you can make a song your own yeah. i think that's really exactly. cool yeah, for yeah that's sure. awesome. Yeah, it's definitely a learning curve, but it's really cool to collaborate in that way. And um, it's like you're also kind of promoting the other band's music as well. Yes, absolutely. And then, you know, maybe you could even re record a cover of their original yeah. and vice versa. Yeah, definitely. That's a great way. It's a great way to support your fellow musicians yeah. and to support songwriting yeah. all around. <laughs> So everybody, I have only two more questions for Miss Starseed here. It's been excellent to talk to you. Again, producer, writer, guitarist, she's the whole array. And she's going to be playing live shows in 2024, so definitely keep an eye out. Um, but when it comes to composing, you're very skilled at music production. Uh, what is some studio gear that you're using at the moment that really helps to enhance your original sound? And, and why would you recommend it to others? Um, well, my, my um, studio setup is pretty simple. Um, I just use my Focusrite interface and um, I just use my Shure microphone for recording vocals. and. Um, logic pro x to mix and master the songs and um yeah i just plug straight into the interface and record and then mix and master from there for guitar tones i've been using um neural dsp um nothing too <laughs> fancy i just kind of like plug straight in record and then mix and master it all in logic a logic girl nice yeah. very very nice yeah, I always hear mixed things about Logic, but it seems like it's a pretty easy DAW to manage and uh, to maneuver, yeah. you know? It seems Definitely. like, yeah, Cubase is, is one that seems a bit trickier. Yeah, um, I've tried yeah. Um, Pro Tools before and it was a little bit um, convoluted <laughs> not to like bring up yeah. my original songs, um, but <laughs> yeah, so like when mixing in Logic, it kind of reminds me a lot of GarageBand, but it's got more um, features. So that's what I like about it. It's more straightforward. Very cool. Very, very cool. So my last question for you is, now this one might have multiple answers. You know, there's no right or wrong answer. What is your songwriting methods and, and what are some themes that your current work is based on or maybe inspired from? So um, the songwriting process usually um, is more like inspired. So uh, whenever I have a melody come into my head is when I, um, that I really like, I usually try to um, build the song from there. So I usually try not to force the song because then it just doesn't feel as like inspired. Um, so um, it usually starts with a melody in my head and I'll hum it into my phone and then after that, I will try to come up with like a guitar part or like something to build around that. And then um, once I ha usually it's a chorus. Um, for some reason, I tend to come up with choruses um, um, more often. So then once I have that, I will uh, program drums and logic and then start adding guitars and then record that into logic and then build the song around that. Nice. <laughs> really dope. So, so you like kind of hear the melody in your head first and just build as you go. Yeah. Just build as you go. That's nice. And it seems like a lot of musicians I've talked to kind of operate in that way. There's no set process. You just hear something and you follow your intuition yeah. with it. And that's really cool that a lot of musicians rely on that and their intuition. That's really cool. Absolutely. Well, everybody, this has been 
Taylor Ariel, also known as Starseed. So definitely if you're coming from my page, hop onto her page, uh, see everything that she's been up to. But is there anything else that you wanted to share or chat about, maybe guitar wise or anything else that's that's exciting for the new year? Um, well, definitely have more songs um, being released in the new year. Um, I have some originals that um, I've had stored in, like in, on my like ideas on my phone and computer and I definitely want to get them out there and also um, plans for live shows um, that's definitely um, a big goal for 2024 and hopefully um, a new guitar as well maybe the gift and S G. yes yes definitely you know I I have experience with an Epiphone SG that's a good one too that you might want to look into i don't know the only thing i will say about that is the neck dive you know the neck the neck dive is a little bit rough oh uh, really <laughs> but yeah. it's got like oh, a super like thin that. neck a super thin neck if you like the thin neck guitars that's for certain true. oh yeah i definitely like the thinner neck guitars very nice Nice. Well, definitely, you're welcome Welcome in upstate New York, and it's been great talking to you. For everybody who tuned in, again, this has been Communicate Live interview series where we chat to creators all over the globe, and be sure to check out uh, her upcoming Thank live you. shows. It's been awesome. Thank you so much. It was awesome speaking with you. Thank yes. you. Yes. Have a great day. Thank it's you. It's been you great too. to talk to you. Happy New Year to you. Happy New Year, for sure.